my father's brother was an organist. He was actually, my father's very musical too, but my uncle was um, trained as an organist, among other things. And he, um, and basically he kind of like started me in music, sort of uh, improvising with me and all of that, you know, till I started, and then I started piano lessons, you know, as a, like at six, you know, just like, Worked with clarinet, which I actually like better, you know. But uh, but pretty much piano was my main instrument, and um, until I got into college, and I became interested in singing, and voice is really what I pursued. I was really sort of intrigued, actually, by torch, because I never run across an ensemble of these instruments before, and. Also, it's sort of a bit of a sly thing. I thought, I bet if you write for these people, they'll play it, you know? <laughs> because there isn't, you know, there isn't a great fund of literature for for this ensemble. So um, I decided to write for Torch and then sort of like was immediately challenged actually by the ensemble. Like, for instance, I had never actually written for trumpet, which is interesting. I don't know how that happened, but it's true. String bass I hadn't written for as having such a prominent part, you know. So I did uh, a bunch of listening, actually, to some string bass performers, you know, to hear, like, the possibilities of sound. And, and also, um, I came across one of Torch's productions, actually, which I found really sort of intriguing, you know, it's really like that. And so essentially the piece is really sort of about torch. <laughs> so I called it, so that's why I called it light bearer, because a torch bears light. And so it's light bearer. And um, the inception was a, of a sort of unfolding slowly, actually with the string bass, essentially sort of introducing like the main motive and then um, everything sort of, everything kind of following from that and then sort of returning, returning to that. I have a background also as a modern dance accompanist. And so that's always kind of like a, that's always a part of what I'm about. And one of my favorite dance rhythms <laughs> that was uh, introduced to me by a wonderful dance teacher was a seven, but divided into two plus three plus two, which I got a da da ba da 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 ba da 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 ba da da da, and so that rhythm actually sort of comes in like a lot of pieces of mine actually, because it's a it's a favorite.
The musical journey starts way back in junior high school marching band. I guess I never really stopped. Um, and at one point, I just needed, uh, I think when, while I was in graduate school, I needed a piece for a recital. And so that I, that's when I got a little more serious about the composition. Because um, I wanted, I wanted a, something that I could play and that was different than the other things on my, on my recital. So. I was like, my first real composition was a result of necessity. The piece that was performed at the festival uh, was really like uh, the result of a collaboration with Brian Chin. Just, you know, he and I spent a summer or a month of like, every day we're gonna write something. And you know, it could be a measure, it could be a phrase, it could, it could be <laughs> a rhythm. But every day for a month, we just shared a bunch of different things uh, and the, the three movements of my piece were the result of, of that collaboration. The piece itself, you know, one was a representation of kind of like how I see music, and music has always been movement to me. And that was the first movement, which was, you know, I, I, kind of my homage to Philip Glass, because I was, you know, listening to a lot of Philip Glass, and I wanted to attempt to write something like Philip Glass try to be more vocal with my way of playing the trumpet. So I was trying to kind of capture some of that. And the thing that I leaned on was really like kind of like listening to mezzo-sopranos and kind of just the warmth of, of that voice, that, that range. And so that was the second movement. That's what the second movement was kind of based on. And then part of the conversation with Brian, we talked identity, right? And... Uh, he would, you know, he was suggesting that I, I write something kind of to pay homage to my Dominican heritage. So my family's from the Dominican Republic. We talked a lot about that. Uh, the other two movements uh, I had written using a 12-tone row. Uh, and it, you know, I, you know, I joked around with him. It was like, yeah, so I'm going to write a 12-tone merengue. That's going to, you know, that's going to be, that's, that's going to work out great. I'm the first generation, first born, first generation American. So that, you know, I'm reaching back to the music that I grew up listening to at the same time honoring the, the music that I like, the, the, the symphonic music that I like listening to. And I like 12 tone music. I like music of the 20th century. You know, how do we make, a, a, how do we make this 12 tone matrix groove? You know, it actually turned out, you know, Brian dug it, the group dug it. Uh, they made it work. Uh, I was, like, extremely happy when I heard it. That last movie was sort of a joke that became a project that became an examination of identity. I tried explaining that to, to like, my, my mom and my brother. I was like, yeah, I wrote this really weird piece, but it's, it's a merengue. And, you know, my mom, my mom was like, well, if I can dance to it, then you know you did it, you did it right. Thank you. 